Let's uh, let's happy get, uh, yeah, let's happy St. Patrick's Day, Steve. Um, Steve, Ooh. Krista, we oh, uh, little Aaron is not feeling well right mm -hmm. now. If, if she get better, good, Aaron, yeah, she may come on, but she is not feeling well right now. So we uh, we um, uh, hoping that, that she uh, is doing well. Um, all right, gang, we have um, a returning guest and we have a new guest that we're getting. There's little Aaron right there. She's watching, she's there. Big hugs. Heart and our heart, he's here. Um, so um, we have uh, two guests tonight. We're, we're working on getting one on, but we have uh, uh, Glenn Cummings and uh, Ronzo Cartwright um, from Stone Deep. And of course, you, Glenn was on here before from Scatterbrain and Ludacris. We talked to him before. Very, very funny. Had awesome story. So we knew we had to get him on. And that was Angelo made a point. That was on episode 150. Wow. This is Wow. I'm getting old. All right, <laughs> let's let's welcome them, and I'm gonna have a little intro video, like always. All right. Joining us in one second. All right, oh, Glenn. How you doing? That intro was awesome. <laughs> was uh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I tell God. you what. Um, I I I told you earlier when we were talking before the show that that we went to the uh, casino and all this weekend. And uh, I listened to the album a couple of your, your new release uh, from Stone Deep a couple of times. And I listened to it last night at home a couple of times. I tell you what. I really I really. I love it. I dig. I I just it it it's 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 great. It it is it is a, a awesome release. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so funny. Like even um you know even when we're like putting it out. I was kind of writing all these posts and and you know we're we're writing here's our kind of new release. But the funny thing is, it's our new release that we released in 1996. <laughs> So um, I always have like a, there's this saying that we used to kind of say, um, we say, well, it's new. It's new for you because you haven't, you haven't heard it before. So we guess it's new. Um, and that's the case with this one. It's kind of remastered and repackaged, but, uh, but the recording was kind of done back in uh, in '96, so wow. it's been a real pleasure to kind of get it out there and get it uh, get it circulating again. So what was it? It was released for a little while on a cassette or something, or it was never released, or? Well, we were kind of we were a funny band. I mean, like the band was really popular regionally down in in Nashville and kind of maybe up to like Ohio and, a, you know, like kind of that you know, a little bit down to Alabama and this kind of area. But um, so we we mostly just printed cassettes because, or duped cassettes because they were really cheap. Uh, where like um, vinyl seemed like a big commitment, you know, like right, right. to carry around. And mostly we, we distributed stuff by bringing it to shows and kind of selling it. So so we, we probably got rid of like, 4,000, 5,000 cassettes of it over the course of the years, but uh, but we never printed it on printed on vinyl. So oh. uh, so it was like if you came to one of our shows and you bought it, you got it. Or if you were a record <laughs> company, I probably sent it to you like thirty five <laughs> times. And you're like, oh no, not this, not this guy again. Um, not this cassette. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> 
but yeah, so it it's sort of it was kind of released, but it's funny how d different the world is now with the internet and stuff, yeah. you know, um, or even what a release means right now uh, than it kind of did back then. So it sounds it sounds fantastic. You all did a fantastic job, you know, redo remastering whatever y'all y'all did to it. Because I tell you what, the 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 the, the sound is fantastic on on this and i encourage everybody to go listen or pick it up or you know because it is uh i was i was i was blown away <laughs> yeah don't take much to blow me away but but still i'm, I'm uh <laughs> I'm, i was blown away i mean i was whoa i said this is good. it's it's different and it just sounds great it just sounds like a great uh really yeah it's funny to go back it's funny to go back to it i mean you know, we were we were a broke band, uh, you know, like everybody else. You know, we had no money, uh, but uh, but Nashville had a lot of really great uh, studios and engineers, and I think we worked with two guys. One is uh, Mike Griffiths, and then Rob Earls, who Rob unfortunately passed away a couple of years mm. back. But they they were, Rob had a set a studio called Sound Vortex, and um, and um, and Griff kind of worked out of a place called 16 the Avenue Sound. I think we made that like, okay, this is you know you've got to convert it to from dog years into like uh, <laughs> human years, like plus like Nashville money versus uh, <laughs> regular money, and also like 1996 finance. To but I think we made the I think we made the nine songs. I think we broke the bank, and it cost us like thousand dollars or something to kind of, like. Hey. Producing, yeah. <laughs> which is really funny because like when we were doing like scatterbrain or when i was doing scatterbrain ah ronzo car <laughs> there, <he is. laughs> there he goes hey, <laughs> how y'all doing all right how you doing good, you? Glad you got on. welcome we got some beautiful looking folks here today what's going on <laughs> can you get the sound off hey, uh, hey. ramona jean angelo harold can y'all introduce us i'm ronzo the beast all right I, all right i'm harold dufrini who you've been talking to for a little bit uh <laughs> online and been communicating with you um angelo I'm over in seattle hey, angelo. Over seattle where are you at harold yeah i'm from louisiana near near new orleans where are you at right now and i'm at i'm at home <laughs> with my two my two leprechaun pals over here um <laughs> over here but I'm, I'm at home in near new orleans Okay, and Ramona and Angela, uh, I mean, Jean. Hi, I'm Ramona, and this is Jean, and we're in New Jersey. New Jersey, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, so to get y'all where I'm at, so some friends of mine for um, uh, St. Patty's Day. Ooh. I'm, in, um, I'm in Readyville, Tennessee, so I'm out in the sticks, Ooh. like literally out in the sticks. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm not alone sticks. out in the sticks. I oh, see. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. And uh, Don Julio over there. Yeah. So. He's, he's enjoying the St. Patrick's Day uh, uh, festivities that we were talking about before the, before we came on the air. We were talking mm -hmm. about enjoying the St. Patrick's Day festivities um, and having a little, uh, I like to call it a taste of the Irish. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm like 128,000% um, Irish. So I wrap my Irish, uh, where was that? I got, one, uh, I got one red hair back here. Oh, <laughs> okay. that's all we need. All you need. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. We all have a little Irish in us. We all have a little Irish in us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Roger, when we were talking, I was telling um, um, Glenn uh, just before you came on the air about um, I've been listening to the rec that y'all released uh, all weekend, and, and it just sounds so fantastic. It, it's out, it, it's it, it it blew me away, really. This and and Glenn was talking a little bit about the the the, the process. It was released on cassette, and now y'all have it uh, it out to the public. Right. So it's it's a crazy thing because it's like. Um... We we go all the way back to the days where people practice like six days a week in somebody's garage, or um, we've practiced in some people's like one lady had a fireworks place and she let us jam out there and stuff like that. So our music come from a whole like a lot of you know back and forth and grinding and 
boy, that sucks or that don't suck. Um, <laughs> the thing that um, our style is most based on is the fact that, um, so when I write songs, they're from personal feelings. If, you, if I ever get a time to tell you my background, it's movie ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like I started out, uh, I was a, cat, a kid prodigy for the Muslim uh, nation of Islam when I was uh, three to five years old. Wow. And I could read uh, and memorize paragraphs and people would come from all over the world. Muhammad Ali and uh, Chaka Khan, all of them would come to see me speak and everything. Wow. Which is wow. it's crazy, right? Yeah. That, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It kind of goes on, you know? And it's just like, I'm I'm, a, I'm more of a spiritual person now. Like, I love everybody and you know, man, I just can't do all the extra stuff, but um, our music comes from that. So when I write songs, what I found out about Glenn, which uh, he says I'm a genius, which I totally disagree. I think he is. But what he what he does for me and what Stone Deep does for me is when I write a song and the feeling and the mood that I have, they literally like literally translate it into music. So if you can listen to my lyrics. Yeah. And then turn it off and just play the music back with no lyrics. It's the exact same feeling. Wow. And that's the whole magic of Stone Deep. And it takes years to cultivate that. But we're at a point now where I can I can hum some stuff and he can feel it and say, oh, you're sad. Or, oh, that I see where that's going, you know. And the fact that, you know, I've been um, a rocker forever. You know what I mean? I'm a tech by nature, IT. But my first job was at Harrison Systems. You remember Harrison Systems? I they, remember. they did. Uh, so actually, I was on the design of the 48 track uh, series TMB that Michael Jackson did the thriller on. Uh, so I did a four, uh, 248 <laughs> track switcher rider board. I used to do uh, design for Harrison Systems. But wow. during that time, the old cats there, all they played was, the, was rock music, Beatles, you know, this and the other thing. And I just loved it. And uh, that's kind of how my first band, the Hardcore, started. Two of the guys from there actually worked back in the uh, testing, uh, Kenny Owen and uh, uh, Kevin Ryan. So it's crazy. That's right. I'm talking to me. Y'all shut me up. Remind no, me, no. Me to show no, no, no. no, no. no, no. Hey, is this, is this, is this show um, PC or? Yeah, you, you could. Yeah, you could. I mean, I you can talk yeah. regularly. Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta get banned or cut off or nothing. You gotta, <laughs> no. keep your clothes on. That's the, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do have that. Well, I, I need you're to go there. Yeah. They've already seen me enough naked myself, so you're good. <laughs> so, just to be clear, nobody's getting naked. No, I, I'm gonna tell you, know, I'm gonna to. let you know. <laughs> nah, nah, you can, you can, Probably not. Not. You, can, you can you can talk the way you want to talk. We don't we don't have no uh, oh, uh oh, he's, no, he's already no, offended. He's yeah, he, 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 I know, I'm already I'm already kicked out. He has to look with his uh, mouth sometimes. It's like uh, me and Glenn, we took like two different paths that met up together because if you look at his like when he was in Ludacris and was in Scatterbrain and all of that and the punk scene and the big you know he was a big deal in Europe and you know what I mean and they had this whole musical thing going on and then we came out so just a little background I was the lead singer for us um the hardcore we was on Interscope Records in 1991 uh and we had yeah. Jam Master J from uh uh Run DMC and we also had Joe the Butcher uh Joe the Butcher Niccolo, who uh, did the Fugees and Cypress Hill came out the same year. Like he sent me the cover, the the studio track of Pigs. Remember that song? That was the first uh, Cypress Hill joint that came out. So yeah. we got to work inside of there. And, uh, you know, we uh, was in Philly for, you know, like three to four months recording. Uh, I went out with Ice-T and Body Came. Remember the Cop Killer tour? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was oh. literally the hardcore. We was the, the uh, dual headliners on that with Ice T and Body Count. Yeah. Wow! So and big ups to Ice T because he actually played a Rhyme Syndicate set. We played the hardcore, and then he came back as Body Count. Oh boy, did oh. two oh. sets a night! Wow! And when we played in Boston, y'all yeah, remember uh, Club Babyhead and all that stuff right there in, in Boston? Providence Those little clubs. Yeah, like, Providence. yeah, in Providence. Was it Rhode Island? Rhode Island. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those places were um, not big enough for him. So we did two shows 
So he would do four shows. Wow. wow. So, you know, we did a lot of that. And we was like one of the first bands to be on the OMTV Raps <laughs> and Music Plus and um, what's the other? The Canadian? Uh, Hairbangers oh, Ball, sorry. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. We was on Hairbangers Ball, Yo MTV Raps, and Music Plus in Canada at the same time. First hey, yo, 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 had to, yo. You turn on yeah. MTV, no matter what specialty programming they had. You know, uh, Interscope did the Interscope thing, you know what I mean? And uh, mm -hmm. once we uh, started getting off of Interscope, we were still doing gigs, and uh, a friend of ours hooked us up with Glenn and was like, hey, man, we lost our guitar player. He listened to the music. He was like, it's not terrible. You know, yeah, I can deal with it. Uh, so we sent him a cassette. He was in Long Island with Mama, right? You said Long right, Island, right. and uh, he drove 17 hours uh, from Long Island to the gig. Oh, we never practiced. He listened to the whole album, sewed up. I remember he walked on stage and he said, "What kind of key y'all doing today?" <laughs> him and the bass player kind of fumbling around with whatever, and he played the whole set. I was like, "So that that was it for me." Wow. If he don't, if Man. he understand what I'm doing. Then I, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Wow! Was that, was wow. that first one Atlanta, or was that one of the? Was that like up in like uh, University of the South, or, or? Yeah, it was like uh, no, nah, it was actually uh, what was the thing where we drank out of frozen uh, Jägermeister? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah, that was like, that yeah, was I remember Sawani College. It's yeah. like a little bitty college. We played at Sawani College. That's right. That's right. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they booked us so that they can get chicks, and like the girls said, they was only gonna stay as long as we played. So <laughs> once we started playing, everybody left the room, and then when we stopped, they was like, "What's the matter? What's going on?" He's like, "Dude, nobody's in." He's like, "No, no, 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 keep playing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh my god! It. So we like started blending music at that time. So it's just like uh, the fact that I have a vast uh, music, like I have a vast music knowledge like i go all the way from rhythm blues r&b to rock credence uh clear water revival to you know what i mean uh david boy i get into earth when it, but i can go to earth when and fire you know what i mean oh. i can go to the eyes of the brothers oj's if y'all want to go there i can go to the platters fifth dimension <laughs> if y'all want to fuck around too long oh, right yeah. so it, it feels from when i was in the ghetto the only thing that uh, brought me solace is my mom had an eight track tape, and uh, my 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 brother's um, dad, who got killed protecting us enterprises, he got murdered, unfortunately. But he was gonna start a record store, so he bought a bunch of eight tracks and a bunch of records. And you remember the old one one size fits all that had the eight track and the the vinyl thing in it and the big speakers on the side. Yeah, yeah I would play yeah. everything. I would play Slave. Uh, you know what I mean, just all kind of old joints, and it, it really got me my mind, you know, to where I could see melodies. I can, uh, I can hear songs inside of other songs and stuff like that. But I, at that time, I never played in a band. When I got older, I was in a rap group here called The Vice, who was strictly hardcore, you know, underground rap. But when I started hearing the music and um, like Glenn and the other guys in hardcore, I was like man my mind can expand because it's like there's no limit to what i can do yeah. you know like right. we went out we went on and hardcore we went out on tour with remember third base oh yeah yeah they were using that the what was uh, their hit song what was their it hit was, pop goes the weasel yeah pop goes the weasel they used the <laughs> Slave Hammer, uh, loop for that right sorry yeah, let me come good. back on here <laughs> yeah we was on but thanks for uh coming back Ramona. Oh, you're welcome. I, I hope the whole everything time. went good with you. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I go away, but I'm still here. You know what I mean? I, I'm I'm me listening. too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm back. Okay. So we were back with the third base, KMD, Nikki D stuff. Uh, and we was uh, at Hardcore. We was the only band that played. So when we oh, were right. on the double headline with them and the other band started complaining because we played right before third base. So they said, hey, man, we got records out, too. So we said, okay, Woods is open. You never let a live band open up for a track uh, rap thing. They could not get it loud. We went in there. We turned all our amps up, all the bass amps up, all the guitars up, drums. My drummer even cracked his crash cymbal so they could, like, 
<laughs> mess up the uh the mics, you know what I mean? And we just ripped them for like three three weeks, and they was like, Hey man, you know what'd be cool if you guys would be the, the next before third base was like, Yeah, probably so. You know what I mean? So uh we come from a, a lot of stuff and then getting Glenn, he came down, started playing. I think uh he, he understands me in a way to where you know um whatever I I was ever in my mind. He can translate it for me. And what, that's the best uh, I could tell you. What, when did, what year y'all met? What year y'all hooked up? What, what year was that? 94? When it was it? I think it was not, I think it was late 92. 92-ish? It could have been like, it could have been right right over into 93. Yeah, it was 93. So we won the Nashville Music Award in 96. And the Narrows Foundation thing. Uh, we awesome. won a Grammy's Best Unsigned Band thing in 96, too. And beat the band in New York, by the way, in New Ooh. York. It was very hard to do. Uh, it was, uh, who was the MC? Who's the uh, the lead singer for In Living Color? Oh, oh. Corey, Corey Glover. Corey, no, no, Corey no, no, something. No. Corey something? Corey somebody. But um, he... Uh. he he That's an actor in like, uh, in like <laughs> Corey Glover. I can only think of Vernon. <laughs> Vernon. Yeah, yeah. Vernon Corey player. Glover. Corey, Corey Glover. Glover. Yeah, he is? came in oh, and after right. we got through plants. So first we was in our Stone Deep stuff, and they said, "Oh, garbage man. That's really interesting. I hope you guys did good because we wore our, you know, our workers' outfit." And the, and the the band from New York was like, "You guys are garbage man. That's cute." I was like, "Okay, garbage man." <laughs> So uh, we actually have a, a tape. Don't we have some film on, on that concert? Why did you get beer? Yeah. Like some guy was standing sideways with his beer and they were trying to do the whole New York, we'll just fade you out. Man, I was like, y'all a bunch of pussies. I thought this was New York, y'all ain't shit. I keep doing beer over him. I said, get the fuck off my stage. I said, fuck y'all. Y'all can eat a dick. And we just started playing. That shit went nuts. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's how we got to get down, man. We're not scared of nothing. We're a rock and roll. I'm not a rapper. <laughs> I am a rocker. Hey. Yeah. And I rap sometimes and we harmonize, but we rock. We're rockers. <laughs> and we have you know what I mean, R and B, so uh fucking Zydeco, whatever the fuck we can throw in there because uh my man, my band, I pick them up against anybody in the universe. We got that shit and don't fuck with me. Like y'all wanna fuck with me live? Come on. Man, please bring the smoke. They, you know what I'm saying? That's just a rap. I don't even, even talk about that that much. I wanted, to, I wanted, to, see that. I wanted to see the the footage of of y'all playing in uh uh on that on that gig in your, in New York when when you, you yeah, know, yeah, remember the yeah uh, yeah, yeah we the did Davis foundation. You could send them to me. It's fucking nuts. I got sick of them people. I was like, fuck New York. Y'all ain't shit. You, know, Listen, you know how they try to get I'm in that turn it back on and be like, yeah. Look, you're 100% you know, yeah. right. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. Like, as yeah. New Jersey people, we get the New yeah. York vibe. Yeah, the big, it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a big talk, a big know, bark. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Big bark. <laughs> yeah. yeah I can tell you about my first. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. New York, man. But yeah. what they I'm got some attitudes over there. What I do like about New York, New York does not have a yes or no button. I mean, they're only yes and no. They don't have five or two or seven, <laughs> right? Either yeah. they fucking love you, like God damn, man, I love you, or they you just shit, like they, they're done. They're like, what the fuck is that? And they move on. Uh, my first gig there, we actually was, uh, we were, I think it was Fishbone Primers or somebody was, uh, anyway, we was on tour. Uh, we played at the, um, what's the um, club that's the church there? Limelight. The Limelight. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We played at the Limelight. They had um, uh, Hell's Angels there at the oh, show. Yeah. Wow. Um, and we came in. We started playing our song, and the guys was just, they was turned backwards almost. You know what I mean? Like, just why did they pay money to get in here? And then I was like, you know what? You know, I'm custom out a little bit. I was like, man, fuck. I said, man, I'm from Nashville. I came all the way up here. This probably be the baddest, you know what I'm saying, place. Y'all just a bunch of fucking turds. Fuck y'all, right? <laughs> and uh, we played the next song, and I seen the guy way in the back, close to the bathroom, and he looked at another guy. He went, mm. <laughs> yeah, I said, I got you. I got y'all motherfuckers. After that, dude, I went in. After we went in, and I think we went into a cover like Back in Black, because uh, uh, actually, yeah, 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, ACDC for eight, um for hardcore, they they approve us doing a cover of back in black. Mm-hmm. We went into oh, that really? and they That's people cool. lost their shit. They actually mosh pitted their way into the you remember the trough uh P <laughs> things in the oh no they yeah. pulled that off the fucking wall and they flooded in there. Is this oh, still like a Chris like a uh where you get christened? Oh no the, <laughs> uh, uh, one big long trough and everybody just standing there or something the was there ice in there too <laughs> <laughs> like oh I remember the, the big long trough oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I I mean, yeah. that brought us together when we first did that first gig. He came from uh, he was coming from Ludacris then, right? Well, and, got, yeah, when we first, yeah, he was coming out of there. I was coming out of there. Yeah, and then it was a rap after that, man. I thought seeing him come and come in and say, "What key y'all fucking around in?" And I've seen him play with like strings missing. Yeah, you know I mean, shit upside down, something, just whatever. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, rock and roll. Yeah. Rock yeah. And roll yeah. Do it. Came to my eyeballs. They, uh, came so to in '96, um, um, Ronzo, that we were talking right before that. So uh, the new uh, Kongfu Grip, that, y'all released that. Well, y'all made the music in '96, right? right? And 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 the, and but y'all never really. Released it on a mass scale. I mean, it was yeah. Cassettes. So, uh, like all movies, that um, this it was just like a movie. So we had a guy here who's managing us. I won't mention his name, whatever. But uh, we had a guy. It was a millionaire guy that was that he knew. He was soliciting uh, people to play for his underprivileged kids. Right. Yeah. All the bands here was like, "Well, how much? You're rich. Give me five grand. Give me ten grand." I'm like, "Fuck it, bring the kids." Like, what are y'all talking about? Right. So we hosted the kids uh, in our studio, and uh, I took every song that we had, and I freestyled their names inside of it, uh, wow. you know, and the guy was real appreciative, and you know what I mean? We had a big thing, so the guy was like, hey, man, can we help you out? Y'all need some, you know, what y'all need? We like demo money, you know what I'm saying? Five dollars, <laughs> a pack of fucking smoke, I don't know, anything. Yeah, like, yeah. Right, so his, uh, his a he was like, beer, I, yeah, the beer, I don't give a shit, like anything other than what we got now. Uh, he was like, Well, I can give y'all like 15 20 thousand dollars. was like, Fuck yeah, right? His friend <laughs> actually chipped in and said, Hey man, either you're gonna help the band or not. And dude said, You know what? Let me call my uh people next day, hundred thousand. Wow. This is in that this is in 90s, so that's a nice grip. That's, that's He's way. like, Cut your album, do what you gotta do. All I ask that one once a year, you guys play for my kids. Done, like no residuals, wow. people with um shit. And guess what happened? <laughs> Ramona, what happened? How do we lose our I money? <laughs> how, how does anybody lose their money? Oh, no. oh. Uh, uh, uh. So uh, as always, there's always some kind of there's always some kind of deal that's that's shady or kind of doesn't happen or uh, yeah. But the Kung Fu Grip kind of Kung Fu Grip, we had some, some real good momentum. We actually did two more releases after Kung Fu Grip. Mm-hmm. Um, we did one. I yeah, one was called One. We got um, one. Mm. And then <laughs> they were, yes, appropriate. The other one was called then, Engage. Yeah, and then the last one was called Engage. But, yeah. Kung, and, but Kung Fu Grip was the first full album. You know, I mean, this is a funny thing, like. The first thing we recorded were five songs. And, you know, back in the day, that was like an EP, right? Uh, then the second thing we recorded, Gangs in the Government, we actually put it out as a tape, which had four songs, and we put it out as a seven inch, as like a little a little vinyl seven inch. I still got it. It's purple. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's like oh, kind of dark red, purplish dark red. There's some naked lady on there, but that's good. Yeah, I don't lady. know what that was. <laughs> Uh, just to wake you up, get you, <laughs> get you, I don't start the day out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we're kind of, but like none of them, like none of them kind of hit like large distribution. I, I'd say like somebody was asking like, how many shows did you guys play between 93 and I don't know, 99. And I was like, I don't know. It has to be like, we had to play like, 
400 shows or something. Wow. Yeah, we played the shit out of some shows. We, we just played, like so you tell them that Warren, Ohio. So we get we get booked at a gig. Dude was like, "Hey man, it's gonna be packed. We got like 500 kids coming." We're like, "Okay, cool." We go to Warren, Ohio. We show up, and it's somebody's barn. It's a big ass barn. It's got electricity and everything. We walk in, and we say, "Hey, where's you remember this one now, Glenn?" I said, "Hey, where's the sound? Where's the sound man?" He's like, "I don't know, but the equipment's in the corner." <laughs> so we we set up the whole PA system. Did our it was a packed show. Did our own show. Uh, but we had to set up the PA system, uh, do our sound check, and then set like some levels and play the sound. <laughs> he was like, "It's over there." <laughs> uh, you were the sound man. Yeah, no personal. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it was, it was just stacks of equipment. It had everything. Luckily, but like yeah. trying to like, yeah, we it's like, like that's yeah. a different level of DIY, right? Yeah. <laughs> but we also played in St. Louis. There was, you know, there was one guy there. He was a school teacher. And he loved Stone Deep, and we played there. And he had fifteen. Remember that fifteen hundred kids that just jammed in there. Wow! wow. We sold yeah. all our merch, all our uh, cassettes, uh-huh. everything. We acted to a point. We made some free Stone Deep stickers. Yeah. And uh, one kid asked the DJ, like, just out, hey, how much of those? He said a dollar. He was just joking, lying for. Him. We sold three hundred of those. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a funny thing, like. Like there's a kind of type of band that that no that nobody that I don't think exists anymore, which is like a regional band, right? Where yeah, it's like right. where you're like where it's like we we play in Nashville and get 500 people. We go to St. Louis, get 500 people. Knoxville, Huntsville, um, Bowling Green, right. uh, Memphis. Yeah. Kind of like we we had like a we had this kind of route that's were that was basically driving distance from. Yeah. Uh, was from Nashville, and and we would get like we would get really strong crowds. We kind of we kept releasing stuff because people bought cassettes, you know. And it was yeah. like, um, but now like you think like everything kind of goes streams out to everybody. So like, yeah, it's so much cooler now. Like we got people in France. What's the guy in Poland? Who, who's the guy that just keep hitting us? It's like. Uh, it was somewhere across, like uh, <laughs> Japanese. Cool, we got a Japanese crew that's like they're just checking in. You know what I mean? Uh, face kickers out of LA, uh, all these cats, and it's just I think that's super cool. Yeah, super cool. It's so much easier to get your stuff out to a wide, wide brand. And the fact that I mean, I say I always this is my quote: "All good music um, doesn't have a time on it; it's eternal." You know what I mean? You can play the Beatles, like the Beatles. You can play the Beatles right now and 30 years from now, and they'll still sound good. Yeah, 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 that's the truth. And that's why we try to make music that does that. Yeah. Stands the test of time. Yeah. Timeless. Timeless. Whenever whenever y'all were um, touring in the little air, like that, you were talking about your little circuit that y'all would tour in, and you would get good. Now, if you would venture out of that, circle was, was that when the show like you would have less people or like <laughs> well you know like the 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 routine was always the same like the the first time you go to play some town you haven't been yet um there's really kind of two ways you know one way is like some band that that already has a crowd that likes you so they say hey come play the show and we'll give you gas money or whatever right so right you, yeah. so you go play with them and then if it goes well then basically you can start, then you basically have a built-in audience. Right. But yeah, there's yeah. the other way where somebody said where where somebody says, Hey man, I heard your tape and like why don't you come and like we'll give you like two hundred a uh, hundred bucks to like come down and play. And on Thursday night, don't worry, Thursday everybody comes out on Thursday <laughs> and and you drive for six hours, you get there on Thursday and and you know it's like it's like eight people or something. Uh. And uh, like that did. guy and his buddy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and the funny uh, thing is i always thought we gotta rock just as hard for that guy and his buddies yeah. like, yeah. their money is gonna get their full you know what i mean five or five thousand yeah. it doesn't yeah matter. yeah that's right. probably yeah. the most well, some of the most famous concerts that ever happened in in the u.s are like the sex pistols tour which uh, almost nobody saw so right like, everybody kind of Everybody's like, it, it's easier to kind of 
learn about a band and become a crazy fan if you miss the best show that ever happened right. in your town. Right. So I always think like, let's just, it's a kind of golden opportunity. Let's, let's, ki let's kill it for those five people. And then, right. and then like clockwork, every time we go back, we'd have a hundred plus the second right. time. Yeah. Right. But if you go yeah. in for the five people and you're like, ah, five people, you know, like, let's drink a keg of beer and like, <laughs> get out of here. Get well, Frozen is really nice here. Yeah. He's announcing <laughs> really good. Right. Yeah, that that's a good attitude. I mean, I mean, because I mean, those five people are probably some of your biggest fans in the first place. Who who went? I remember and and going to a um, monkey pup show, a monkey pup show. Oh, I remember monkey pup. Yeah, I, I went to see Monkey yeah, Pup in Monkey Houston Pup. one time. I think it was Fitzgerald in Houston. I was working in Houston at the time. And I went in and I felt so bad. I was like, me and I think like like two other people, or maybe they were even the bartender and somebody else. And I was, right. I was like, oh man, I feel so. But um, at the time, I forget, uh, Baby, I forget what his name, the bass player at the time, he came and thanked me for coming to the show. And I tell you what, they, they put on a great. They, Right. They they performed well, Monkey Pup. Well, so. <laughs> yeah, you just do it, and you're like, hey, you guys, you know, we got like all this beer. Is anybody in the audience want a beer? <laughs> right. I bought That's like, like three. I felt <laughs> bad. I bought like three yeah. t-shirts from them. You know, I wanted to support yeah. them at least. <laughs> That's where your diehard fans come from, though. Like the real deal. Like yep. once you make it somewhere, you remember those people the most. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, uh, like when we played for uh, when we went on the uh, uh, the cop killer tour with Ice T, what I would do is it and it was sold out everywhere. Like you cannot if you didn't have tickets, yeah, you get hot. in. I would actually we um, since we was new uh, on Interscope, we had like maybe five or six um, um, little passes for uh, people to set up the crew set up. Yeah. They had no crew, so I would go outside <laughs> after it sold out. And then there's a big line of, of people, right? Of course, there's your hoochie mamas up front and cool people. <laughs> I just go to bypass them, go all the way to the back, and then the last four kids were like, "Hey guys, y'all want to be road crew for the night?" I did that that whole uh, cop killer tour. And I think that tour was almost six months long, and wow. I did that every night. I was like, "Y'all want to be road crew?" Slap their little badges on, help my drummer and my guitar. You know, this some of that stuff, and you can watch the whole show from backstage. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> I bet that was more. I bet they were excited. They were more they excited. Never, they, they'll never forget me. Like I, you know, uh, oh. we had a couple of them that, uh, that we did. The first time I did was in Chicago. They showed up in New York. Uh, one kid showed up. I don't know how he got to Canada, but he showed up in Canada. <laughs> we was doing uh, Fafuna Electric over there uh, for New Year's, or whatever. So yeah, it's good. Right. <laughs> oh. that, yeah, we also, go ahead, Glenn. <laughs> Yeah, like we played so many crazy places over the years. Like, uh, I mean, Ron, Ron and 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 also Terry, of course, kind of had the experience in um, in in the hardcore. And like for me, Ludacris, it, you know, like our first tour we did, um, you know, it was like the super low budget punk rock club. So we played. Um, yeah. This is probably repeating some of the stuff from last episode. No, I, I, I like, love hearing. Played karate studios, uh, storage facilities, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, strip bars in between the strippers' sets. Uh, we played in Tele people's houses, yeah, literally telephone. in people's houses. Like my parents out of the, like we were like, "Where's the club?" And we'd be like, oh, "Well, it's my I'm house." In the <laughs> and then my parents were going on a cruise, so we were like playing in people's <laughs> house. This is, I'm sure you've heard this one before, the cornfield. Uh, venue that was kind of in uh maybe it was in nebraska or something it literally was a cornfield you know so <laughs> they would get some big sheets of two by fours and um I, I mean of like four by eights and they like so we got to the address and they were like what, what's going on it's literally a cornfield like there's like there's like a fence like the paddle out or whatever and then a cornfield and we're like it's a cornfield, guys. Like, and we're kind of like hanging out. And we're like, all right, well, let's just sit here for a little while. And then, like, a bunch of a bunch of kids show up, and they're like, I, I can't believe you guys came. Yeah, you're like, I can't believe I came either. And they had like these big four by eight sheets. They put them down. They had a generator, and we're like, 
Wow. They like mashed down some of the corn, you know. <laughs> so it was like the place, and we were Perfect. like, we were like, and then like you know, like all these people showed up. <laughs> Three hundred people, people showed show up. up. The show was out. You know, what I mean? they, so we played all. We played so many kind of crazy, yeah, uh, they, situations over the years. It, it's it's amazing some of those shows that that's where you get your your most hardcore fans from those shows though they yeah. have a place in Mississippi called the Little House when I um, when I lived in Mississippi near the um, Iberville Mississippi I went to a show I thought it was a club it said the Little House so I went and it was actually the guy <laughs> he built a shed in the back of there <laughs> and they had a shed in the back and that was the Little House. <laughs> I walked in and the guy said, well, you're here early. Come on in the house. So I went inside the house. The band was watching Disney movies with, with the family. The dad, is, the dad was cooking spaghetti or something. He was going to serve everybody after the show. And after a while, they said, come on, let's go to the little house. We're going to have the show. So everybody just went in that little shed. They had this. It was amazing. It was an amazing. The, yeah, it was amazing. And people... No cover try. Everybody chipped in. You know, they passed the hat around, and and the band. You know, it was it was fantastic. And uh, um, I guess you still have that now. I just I don't go to too many shows like that anymore. I guess. So I would say uh, the closest thing we've come to something just like uh, homegrown and kind of off the cuff. You remember uh, this recently? We played in a tunnel. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. so we I, saw that. I saw that on yeah, the like, field. One of the There's a place called the Wave Pool here, but on the other side wow. is these just random tunnels. And the kids set up a little like Makita generator, uh, eight track mixer, and he powered a couple of speakers <laughs> and like two microphones. Go, that place was dumped. That was stupid. Like, I was like, ain't no kids gonna sell for this. Yeah, they did. Wow. They funneled themselves all the way back 300 deep through the uh, it was it was outstanding. Wow. I y'all put pictures of that online, I think, right? Because I think yeah. 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 yeah, and it was it was Halloween, it was Halloween night. So the audience yeah, was, the, were in costumes and um yeah. it was that also was pretty cool. amazing because <laughs> like what the guy who was running, he was like, Well, you know, there's nothing to eat around here, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna cook hot dogs and sell hot dogs. <laughs> Who's gonna make like, a talk three dollar hot dogs? <laughs> so basically, had this hot dog grill in there, like that was like belching out smoke and and then some other kids are like spray painting graffiti oh. on the wall, so it's like it's like Fumes. smoke and kind of like oh hot and dog. smoking all the weed that was in oh, Nashville yeah. at the time. <laughs> really sick, Concentrated like, hot dog, molten hot dog juice, molten and, hot uh, dog spray wow. paint. Wow. It was like it was like as it should be. It's like intoxicating. That yeah. that is that is hardcore. That is that is. Uh... <laughs> It was one. Of the, it was one of the, the most like enjoyable shows I've done in a while. Oh, I could. They had no that. monitors. Uh, you know what I mean? They had two like horn speakers. I don't even think they had bass speakers. There were horn speakers <laughs> laid down sideways so it could push yeah. all the way through. Yeah, don't you remember we had to take the we had to take the PA speakers and put them up on an amplifier oh because they were kind of like. They were kind of like monitors. Yeah, that was on the floor. That were like facing towards, so you could either have monitors and hear yourself, or you could face the back monitors to towards, the, uh, towards the towards the audience. Like, it's pretty um, good. Hey, listen, I've been here the whole time. Okay, I'm <laughs> trying, I'm trying to have my hands in the frame so that you see I'm here. And I'm like, Whoa! You're not getting no hand in the frame. I don't know what you're doing over there, but you know, just, whenever it's baked, send me some or whatever. Sometimes I get shy and I have to go off for a while. Oh, I saw the hand. I saw the hand move. Like, Thank you. It, uh, are are y'all? Are y'all still? Uh, um, um, are y'all? I mean, I see y'all online. Y'all doing a few shows. Are y'all planning on maybe? Running, doing a little bit to more tours for this uh, shows for this for this new release or, yeah, that's the plan. We yeah. haven't we haven't putting it together yet. I mean, yeah, uh, we're gonna do some like... local stuff and um, just see how it goes. Uh, right now, it's just really advantageous to get your music out online and right. have your voices, um, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. To be honest with you, we have almost four albums already in the can. So, wow, Blue Grip is just the first one of those four, and also 
there's some strange reason my light has cut on uh, lately. I, Glenn, I say some shit at four in the morning. I <laughs> And uh, we almost uh, we'll have a double album, a new double album, probably finished by middle of summer. Awesome, awesome. It's ideas and you know, demo. But this is like when it hit me, I got to go get it. You know, yeah. Be yeah. Anywhere four in the morning, I just wake up, record it, uh, do my you know lip sync of the bass and what the melody is, <laughs> and the chorus is, and send it in. We've been together long enough. He's like, got you. And I got know, a lot, I get a lot of like uh, messages in the middle of the night that like it's, it's like where there's some uh, some man singing to me on the on the message. I bet, but uh, Roger, I could I could relate to that because I get some ideas too, and you know, I got. Weird times, and, and when you get the ideas, you got to roll with them because the ideas will flat will go away. You know, it's like right oh, because the, uh, the only magic is the original idea. Yeah, if you wait till later, it's going to be a watered down version of what it is. Always going to be a watered down version because you thought of something else, you had a different feeling, and by the time you get it down, it's okay. But it, you you even look at it, and be like, mm, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, but I I don't know what I did last, but that was. I felt I felt right. strong enough that I had to get up and record it. Yeah, I mean, you're 100 percent right. I could I could relate to that 100 percent, 100 percent. It's a yeah. it's Dylan. There was a good like you know like Bob Dylan's still writing songs, but uh, there there was a good interview with him where he said uh, he said he said like why aren't you writing songs like you did in the 60s? And he's like, I don't know. He's like, I I, I never really wrote. He's like, I have to be honest, I never really wrote songs. Like, just like, I just, I just heard songs and, you know, I just had, like, I would just get up in the middle of the night and I have a whole song in my head. Yeah. And then I try and like record it or write it down and like, so that it could be remembered. And he's like, all my songs were mostly just delivered, a good portion of them just delivered whole into my brain. And it was yeah. mostly because I was listening to a lot of music and like that my brain would just reconfigure them into kind of all the things my, you know, like that if you have enough um, density of things you've heard and things you're excited about, that your brain, your brain just does these processes. And, like, yeah. and it was somebody else who said, I'm not a, I'm not a writer. I'm just the, I'm like the receptionist of my brain. Like oh, my brain man, sends me messages. And I try and like write down what it, it too. what it said. It's like what the fuck is four o'clock? I mean, and we're time differential too, right? It's no telling when you get my shit because I just been wake up anywhere. It'd be in the middle of the day, before in the morning. I'm like, hey, I'll be stills and nash, but also some beats. I think we're on something like. 21 new songs. 21 like and in my in my iPhone, I got a, 116. Right. Wow. So y'all say goodbye to this. My uh my friend Jonathan. Come here, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> this is my host. This is my brother, Jonathan. Hey Jonathan, how you doing? So they're they're getting ready to finish whatever the hell is that doing upstairs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even retrieve my bottle, the bottle. They're like, <laughs> yeah, like excuse me. <laughs> yeah, excuse but, me. But, I need that bottle back. I need that bottle back. Now, Ron, you gotta tell you gotta tell us what is that t shirt you got on there? I saw oh, something. Yeah. Oh, okay. I saw something, so, but I couldn't make uh, it out. We had, we had something really cool happen. Um so this guy contacted us. Have y'all ever heard of uh what's it what's it called? I don't know. <laughs> no. Couch riffs. Oh, couch riffs. <laughs> oh, couch riffs. I'm so awesome. Yeah, so couch riffs was so cool. This guy's he's from uh, Ugly Kid Joe and a couple oh, of other guys. Wow. And uh, the coolest part about it is so me, Glenn, uh, some of the Ugly Kid Joe guys and another guy we recorded um, "Summertime." We re we did a Stone Deep version of "Summertime" by Will Smith and and Jazzy Jeff. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's amazing! Now here here's the onion. Nobody ever sat in the room together. 
Wow. So <laughs> Glenn did his guitar from New York. The other guy was in, was he in no no what was he in Finland? It was some guy he was on the way away. One of the guy was upstate, somebody was California. California, there's one guy in like them, they'll tell you where they're from if you go look at it. But uh, we mm -hmm. did them all in separate places, blend them together, and that shit is on fire. Wow. And I, I didn't, didn't do the how'd you get the t-shirt? I got it from him. He sent me like some award thing and said, Congratulations, you've been on whatever. And he sent me t shirts and a recognition thing for being on that show. Oh, oh Glenn, you didn't get it. You didn't get a shirt because you just played the time. <laughs> Yeah, this is funny. I, I have to this. I have to apologize that we will not be sending you a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, infrastructure speak, for that. Speak for, speak for yourself. Oh, you, I, I, I got, got, you, you have no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, I'm you, got t-shirt. You're trying to be a smart ass. What kind of t-shirt <laughs> you got under there? Under your uh sweater. Hell. What do you got? What, oh, me? Uh, what do I what have? Do you have? Yeah, what's under well, there? First of all, the sweater is uh, I know it's so cute. Godzilla that's, and this that's one. That's fucking this delicious. I'm not gonna copy Look at that. that. That's there. us. Yeah, and they say I love you on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah, I see, I see that's now. Ron's gonna try yeah. and convince you out of your t-shirt. He's gonna try. Yeah. And this is yeah. a <laughs> this is a ICP shirt from Hello Wicked 2016. Yeah. Oh, oh shit! Awesome. The same clown posse. Oh yeah. yeah baby. Oh yeah. This is a Juggalo oh, show. Yeah. Juggle friendly. Oh, yeah. Whoop whoop. Yeah. Oh That's yeah. Uh, yeah, same club. I used to go yeah. see them in Cleveland a lot. Man, I, the I was gonna bring them up earlier when you were whoop, talking whoop. about regional act, but uh, I didn't I decided not to. But yeah, you guys whoop, should whoop. play the gathering. I know so, literally that over. I, mean, I, I need that you need to send me that shirt. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, will, <it's> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I will send I will send you a after show chat shirt. I got after you show. He just wants this one. He doesn't want to have one. I know. I'm going to in hell. Man, I'll make man, one for information. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll rewear it and post it and give you a shout out. But you didn't send me that shirt. I, yes, I know. Right? No way you're going to get that shirt. That shirt yeah, I know. Nice, I wish man. it wasn't like one of a kind for me. I know. But, uh, this is from 2016. We have multiples it of was other the, ones. The but... last time they played at Harpo's for the uh, Hell of Wicked, we yeah, saw them. Oh, that was so good. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so what else? What else we got? What is we can like send that? you? We probably could send them a random ICP shirt. Yeah, if you we want an ICP 20. shirt, yeah. <laughs> we could just send you a random ICP shirt. Okay, through Harold. Like like <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, I'm good with them. They, 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 what's up? Yeah, I can rock. I, I would, I would, I would, oh, go ahead, Glenn. They're fun. Oh, I like that system even better. Like instead of like a like you don't even have to have like a after show chat. It's just like. A shirt that you have. <laughs> Any shirt. <laughs> like, I, I would love it. Please, I got right? a closet full. I, I would just love to I'll send, send you a North you know. shirt. I'll send you a... Um, what, who else do I got? I'll send you a Hub City Stompers long sleeve. How do you like that? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, be like we're kind of out of shirts. I'm just gonna send you some of my socks. Like this one. <laughs> <laughs> time to wash. Oh, it. hey guys, for um, this is gonna be a little weird, but in in uh, honor of St. Patrick's Day. Oh, I get this for y'all. Uh, get my old leg up here. <laughs> oh, nice! Wow. Oh, look at that! <laughs> and you're flexible. It's <laughs> long It's like some very kind of, flexible. Some kind of like David Lee Roth move over there. I right? know. Oh. I just blew a hammy, but that's good. <laughs> no, you're not going to be able to walk tomorrow. <laughs> and we're sorry. Uh, um, no fault. Ramona. <laughs> I would like you to ask. I knew that questions. was about to happen. Okay. Yeah, I, I would like you to ask the question that we ask every guest that we did ask Glenn last time he was on. I think we yeah. still have So we have a question that we ask all our guests that come on. Um, and Ramona will uh, uh, ask the question. Okay. <laughs> this, is our, this is our standard question. A very special, exciting. If you right now, no, no charge, free of charge, could either go see... Billy Joel or Motley Crue, who would you pick? And, and it would be <clears throat> them right now, not not yeah, the right old, now, the current. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the, the current. But you don't have to pay, and someone else is driving. Like it's all set up for you. But you have to. Pick <laughs> I don't one. know why that really changes. The choice, I mean, it would but... change it for me. I don't want to do all that. I'm not going to do any of that effort to see either one of them, even though I like. <laughs> 
Well, well, if you want to go see the effort, why those two? It's just, I don't even know. I don't even remember is. how this came up. It's just become our question. Well, it's like, I kind of will explain it, I guess, after the answer. answer. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't okay. remember. Okay. I would Which go see Billy Joel, though. Well, oh, oh, I love that. that. You're on Open Team, team Billy Joel. Joel. <laughs> yeah. Glenn? Glenn? I'm gonna have to go. Mot- I'm gonna have to go. Motley Crue because all right, you're with us. Because Billy Joel, because <laughs> Billy Joel, like grew up at, at one town over from me. Oh, <laughs> he got just, personal like, links. No. Just like personal melted with Billy Joel, like <laughs> too much. You know, like, <laughs> but I mean, Motley Crue. Like, come on, guys. Uh, I know. Well, it's here's not about the, musical integrity I at know. that point. It, it, okay, it's really like is. a magic opening up for him. <laughs> well, that would be oh, really wow. something. <laughs> Who was it? Danzig. Yeah, that's Danzig. What that's what I thought you said. Such I an know. interesting pair. Don't listen. I'm from New Jersey. Don't make me. I know. Really my, talk about. Uh, I got a misfit tattoo. Yeah. I wish, oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that, that that Danzig Elvis album. I still get nightmares. It's so bad. <laughs> I wish it was good. I wanted it to be good. I wanted it to, I be, wanted good it to be good too. <laughs> I wanted it to be good too. Now, when Danzig and all those came out, that's when I started getting into rock. So actually, oh, cool. um, I was uh, had. I graduated from high school when I was 16, first of all. I uh, had a, you know, some bad experience at home. Not me being fucked up, but drugs for the family, uh, my mm-hmm. stepdad. Um, so I moved out, but my one of my friends at school, I was a roommate with him, and he's a black dude from Clearwater, Florida, Cletus Jackson, and he, all he did was play MTV. Now, I worked <laughs> graveyard shift. I, I went from uh, college from 6 to 10, night school, 11 to 7.30. So he would just play it while I was asleep. Uh, so I would wake up and he'd be playing White Snake and Queen Drake and you know what I mean, Danzig. And I'm like, did he turn that shit off? Then one day I got up and I was like, what's well, already on? I sat down with a bowl of cornflakes. I was like, wait a minute. It's pretty good. Wait a minute now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then I, it, 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 my mind kind of really sparked in and I started listening to like Boston sticks like for the instrumentals of it because those are our dynamic players you know what i mean totally and right. then uh you know then that whole white snake thing and then you know i started listening you know it started progressing and stuff i started digging back when i got my job at um harris the system they was like hey man you heard of credence clearwater revival you ever heard you know any of that old so i was like man they kind of right <laughs> You kind of getting it a little bit, right? So I just started really getting into that stuff. So a lot of my music has got mixtures of that stuff in there. That's amazing. That's that's an awesome story. Well, and that's always the best stuff when it's just from all over. Yeah, yeah from all over. Mitch, Mitch, I went from R and B, like really deep roots R and B, when I was a, like younger, younger child. Then I got turned on to rock, and you know what I mean. Uh, anything from the Beatles all the way, you know. Uh, I, and I actually. Called um, I called the flip of Nirvana because uh, when all the bands got big haired and over pop, I said the first person to come through with some jangly strings, right, <laughs> and right. not and don't have a big eighties fucking makeup <laughs> and the puff hair is gonna rip yep. everybody shreds. They came through. I called the second one just recently. Because I told a friend of mine a year before Chris Stapleton came out, I said the first dude, because uh, country now, there might well be rock bands. and rock bands that do country, right? And they got anybody. Right. And I said the first dude come with some old dirty strings, little like he'd been at the, at the fishing hole in the cement pond. <laughs> I said he was going to rip everybody to shreds. No, well, you know what? Talking about uh, being juggalos, mm-hmm. you know who was, who's was who been a juggalo favorite for years? And he played at this Hallow Wicked, 2016 Hallow Wicked, and now he's like a friggin' superstar. Jelly Roll. Uh, oh, he's from he's from here though. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I know that, right? Like we used to see him at uh, Juggalo yeah. stuff all the time, and yeah, now he's ICP, like yeah. on WWE and all this. Yeah, like, he's wild. Like, yeah, I mean, really but he's from pop. he's from he's from like literally our neighborhood. I remember Jelly yeah, Roll wow. when he was a kid. You know what I mean? And uh, before he got you know into trouble and everything, but yeah. yeah. I'm I'm happy for him. Oh, Ooh, absolutely! Yeah, man. of course. It's so so wild. wild how he, was, he did underground for the longest. The um, longest. Mm-hmm. He put yeah. it in his life. That's uh, Jelly Roll. He's all over. 
I mean, you can't tell. I mean, every, every, I mean, he is, he is, he really blew up. He did, he did. I I really had it for him. So I I, I got a question for Angelo. Yes. Uh, Are you funding this? Are you like the money man? Because you don't say shit. I'm good. I'm doing all the behind the scenes stuff. I'm talking to our other person that's coming on right now. So he's like Kaiser Soze. He's behind the scenes. He's our he's our producer guy. He's our producer guy. Scenes in front of the scenes too at the same. Okay. Yeah, he is. He's the puppet master. What do you want to know though? That's what he wanted to know. know. (laughs) Angelo wants to do an AMA. Let him. (laughs) Yeah. All right, gang. Um. I really appreciate y'all guys coming. Here. Y'all fun, Glenn. You're always a good. Ronzo, you you were a blast. I love talking to you. Thank you. Absolutely. You are. You are you this is been so much fun. Uh, uh, Ramona, Jean, send me my shit. We're gonna give you it. I want to tell you something, and I want to be really honest from the heart, okay. and the people who watch this show know because we owe them everything. Okay. We <laughs> got emotional problems, and we don't do stuff. We have <laughs> it takes a long time. Executive dysfunction, <laughs> so it all has to be Harold putting pressure on us. All that she just said don't mean shit to me. I want my shit. <laughs> oh, Fair enough. I, hell, I got emotional problems. Shit, I, got I know. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll stay on them. Stay I'll on stay us. On them. I'm going to get them out. We're going to get a random. Any Ran- it's gonna be random as shit. I'm saying the more random the better. Oh, but good. Yeah, absolutely. All I ask is think about the conversation, what person you think I am, and what would like, like, you know what I'm saying? I right. got a few of mine yeah. already. You, we're we like, jugglers. We got a whole, uh, so many shirts. Yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. It's gonna be like a, it's gonna be like a, like a container. Uh, container. I know, right? Uh, you got one of these. I know, right? We have to throw uh, extra goodies. Space I will coordinate space everything. I've, I've got. Ronzo, you don't understand. I got to coordinate a lot, so I'm gonna coordinate that. Dude. Don't worry. I, I stay on it. I stay on. Hey, I'm, Harold, I'm we really need big you. and gift giving. I like. So you see how I wear these. Yes. <gasps> oh, is that is that a dramatic pause? <laughs> I think it's a freeze. Whether <laughs> intentional or not, it is. <laughs> this this is gonna uh, oh. this is gonna maybe spark Ramona to be a little more. Let's see. This is my tiger eyes. Ooh. Tiger eyes. What's this that? Is my actually, this is my um, Arabic writing. Oh, cool. oh. what's that saying? It says, "I bow to no man." Is what it says. I love that. And but what I'm gonna do once I get my shit, Ramona and Jean, I'm gonna sing you one of these. Hey, listen, oh, and not, know, I got I know, and it's not a fake. Whatever what I'm wearing right now, not not ones that I got in my thing, like one of these. Yes, those ones. I got one that's got green on it, uh green tiger eye, and then this was more powerful. That's got the 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 bigger, you know I mean the uh brown and but I'm gonna sing one of those. Oh, oh, that's a deal. Here. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure this happens. We're I will make sure this what? happens. When we go to the post office to mail your thing, then we're gonna mail everyone everything oh. that we have. <laughs> you drop it all off. <laughs> yeah, you have changed yes. our lives. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gang. Um, Ronzo, I'm gonna let you go back and enjoy that bottle okay, before yes. they before they all uh. uh I know uh, whoop whoop slancha and uh, the yeah, salute. And we had a great time talking to y'all. But Thank please you. go check out the album. Go spin, go buy. I see y'all selling merchandise. Go check them out. Go follow them. Uh, Stone Deep Stone, go follow us. Stone Deep Store. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on what else? Yep. Every yes, streaming every every, every streaming service. You I will put, put the links Stone up. Nashville, you can find us. We're like hot. Yeah, hot and, and that's the Facebook page is Stone Stone Deep Nashville. So I'm gonna put all the links up on on this video after we finish, um, and we put it up back on YouTube. We're gonna put all the links in there. Um, gang, thank y'all so much. And what we're gonna I do? Oh, we're, we're gonna close. You. When we close it out, I'm gonna when we when we leave here, I I'm gonna play the uh, summertime the couch riffs. Summertime video oh, to close nice. us oh, out. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Like you guys yeah. 
I can't wait. Yeah. It's not the Will Smith. It's the Ronzo the Beast with Stone. All Day. right. That shit is, and, and, and listen to it because it starts off exactly like Will Smith's and then it morphs. Oh, and it awesome. Well, I can't wait. We're going to listen to that in one second. Thanks again, guys. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thanks, Ronzo. It was a total pleasure. Oh, it was a blast. Oh, what a great show. We're, we're definitely going to. We're definitely gonna uh, we have you guys back on. We're definitely thank gonna get you so you guys much. I had so much on. fun. You guys are beautiful. Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank I'm you. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make sure whenever y'all come back <laughs> on, y'all got you got your stuff first. Yeah, I don't want to hear no. I ain't, I ain't going nowhere near y'all. Not I can't get my shit. We're <laughs> <laughs> giving it to you, babe. When you ask I'm that way, there's no question. The same way how you talk shit to the New York people and then they turn around. That's the same. I do exactly what I want. That's my southern charm. Uh, I love, love it. it. I know it works, <laughs> and and I hope I hope to get to see y'all one day. Um, um, I mean Nashville is a little far for me, but but I would love to go up there and see. Y'all. I could see you, you, know you know what? How it's building. Like our 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 thing is building because people are really trying to get back to real music now. Totally, so it's a really good time. Totally. They're digging in the nineties music and two thousand music and stuff. Oh. So there's a chance that we can you know get. A bigger following and actually get closer to you guys. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Even if y'all play Memphis, I love Memphis. Maybe we can go take a ride up to Vin. If y'all ever play Memphis area, even yeah, you we know, can that... play Memphis. So yeah. Oh, I'm did y'all? Yeah. Yeah. Could have we'll went back. We'll be back. Yeah, I could have went to Grayson. I could have went to see you guys. Go to Tupelo. If they go to Tupelo, maybe. Oh, Tupelo. <laughs> yeah. I'm always in Tupelo. No. I'm always in Tupelo. You just love Tupelo. That's why. Yeah, I do. I do. I like to go visit Elvis's house. All right. What can I do? All right. <laughs> hey, gang. Thanks a lot for coming on. Um, Thank we're going to We're going to bring you. We're going to bring y'all. Uh, we're going to end this. We're going to end this segment. We're going to be right back. We're going to uh, continue on. But let's let's close it out with this summertime. Couch Rift presents summertime and i'm really looking forward to this thanks again guys um yeah. we do appreciate y'all coming in all right let's check this out here we go let me hit play <laughs> Now here's a crew fighting to transform Just a little to break from the norm Just a little something to break the monotony Of all the hardcore dances gotten to be A little bit out of control It's cool to dance But what about the crew that's food to southern romance They give me a soft southern mix And if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it And think of the summer's past Adjust the bass and let the alpine blast Pop in my CD and run around And put it in the cruise and lay back Down comes the summertime Let's do it stone deep style yo. It's the beast, yo It's the beast, yo Yeah, yeah, yeah Here's a groove, slightly transformed, but I'ma take this way out the north. It's sort of a little hardcore. Let me pour some knowledge in your cup, show you what's up. The year of our Lord, 1968. I was sometimes late, I alienated to this state. Survival weight, and uh, black was my skin. Black was the ghetto, no black to let My summertime rhyme of mine, you'll find. The dirty, dirty south, what this all about? I was born and raised in Nashville, Cassville, Collins, Tennessee. Ah. It wasn't all the shits and giggles and apple pie and strawberry delight shit we had fights. Murder and mayhem back by the street. Hope oh, you do it dirty in the streets. In the freak, some call it the ghetto. Mom works hard to get us out of settle court and into a house in Inglewood. Not Brentwood, but still not the hood. In all the streets, there was me. We were still eating hot chicken and collard greens and barbecue on weekends with lots of food. The OJs had us in a good mood. The street lights come on, we still going strong. Cause everybody loves what we got it going on. 
I got to say, cause this type of shit happens every day. But with my eyes rolling, I produce this rhyme. Stone deep, and this is my summertime. Ah, thanks again, guys. Yay. So awesome. Very uh, that was fantastic. Thanks again, guys. You well, better come again. back. You yeah, better come we'll, back, both of you. Yeah, <laughs> All right, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna yeah, get y'all back for, uh, 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 in, in the near future. Thanks again, guys. Y'all can just let yourself out. See y'all later. Bye. 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 Enjoy the rest of y'all day. Thank you. Or night or whatever. Thank All right. Say. Woo. Oh, yeah. What a wild ride. Much, <laughs> so much fun. Fun. I mean, what a great interview. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, what a person. I loved it. I loved it. That was, that was fantastic. Oh.